So we got some questions the other day on um, the video that David shot with the 2,448 yard shot using his 37XC and how that was done using the DTR app. So we thought we'd go through the app for you and you can kind of get yourself familiarized with how it works. So we're using a, D, a, a DTR V2D reticle. We have several reticles in a Leopold Mark V. <clears throat> When you buy the scope, you get the app, comes free, and you have a supplier solution, a chart, or a simulator, but we're gonna go to the menu. This is the easiest place for us to start. I go to settings each and every time because I have all my guns logged in, and I hit restore default settings. So I take myself back to <clears throat> a good starting point. Rifle setup, I have several reticles. We're gonna use the V2D. We're gonna pick the, it has default rifles, and here's the rifle custom rifles. We're gonna pick a 37XC with a 400 grain Warner at 2911, and here's the bullet. And we can see we have all kinds of bullets in here because you can use this reticle with anything. It's obviously designed to be a fitted suit, but it can also say have the gunny sack approach and one size fits all. <clears throat> I go to the units and you see I can change from yards to meters, inches, feet, wind speed, muzzle velocity, hole point. This is a mil radian scope or the adjustments are in mil radian, so we'll change that. You can go on down and change the temperature, pressure, and so on and so forth. So if you don't live in America, you've got options. <clears throat> uh, we also do chart, have a chart if you're going to do just come-ups, which a DTR version reticle does not. But I'm just going to put in 4,000 yards just for Garyans here to start with, all right? <clears throat> so we have all that. We go to settings. We go to here. We go to the firing solution. And we're gonna put in, we're gonna have a gun that has 100 yards zero, okay? So, let's go back right here. So you're zeroing at 100 yards. All right, so we have 100 yards zero. So the 100 yards zero, <clears throat> there's the 100 yards says rifle zero, there's the bullet, there's the current atmospherics, it defaults to a 4K DA, but if you tap, the, tap that, and you tap that one more time, it pulls the atmospherics from the most current, closest weather station. So right side, right now, outside is a 4.11 KDA. Right? And here it shows 100 yards zero. You hold 126 yards with this particular combination. So it would be about a click low or on the bottom edge of the dot. Okay? Um, and so we're going to shoot a 2448 yard shot. We can shoot it with the reticle just like it is without recalibrating it to a 2,000 year zero. So here we go, <clears throat> 2448. It says I hold 1,849 yards and my wind dot values, if I could pull right up to 1,000, it will tell them. Those are really good wind dot values. These dots are about nine mile an hour dots. So okay. let's do like you did the other day and do a 2,000 yard zero. Right, and the reason I would do a 2,000 yard zero is I want to use I want to use something other than an 1850 hole point because I could probably shoot that at eight power, but I want to shoot a 20 power, let's say. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in a 2000 yard zero. And it says that for a 2000 yard zero, I need to come up 16 mils. Well, in a Mark V Leopold, it'll come up 30 mils. So I dial up 16. I go and change my 100 yard zero to a 2,000 yard zero. And then I'm going to go, so there's my 2,000 yard zero now. By dialing it up, and I'm going to change my 2448 hole point, which was the shot. And so there's the effective elevation hole point based on the current atmospherics. You know, in the video the other day, it was 977. Well, the KDA was slightly lower. It's like 3.5 or 3,500, however you want to look at it. So, but 950 or 949 is the effective elevation hold point. Now, if you want to know what your wind dots are worth and so on, you go in and hit the dot values, and it tells you that your wind dots, the round dots are three mile an hour incremental dots, three to four, okay? So there's three to that one and there's four to that one. So you can figure they're three and a half. Also with accounting for the precession spin drift, so on and so forth, 
you can see that the center dot is now a two mile an hour wind hold dot. And my five mile an hour dot to the right is a one mile an hour dot. So really my true no wind zero at this yard line would be a three mile an hour dot. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you want to go and you want to correct, let's just say, well, at this point in time, when we go back to the effective hole point, it's giving me the effective hole point based on the wind currently, all right? See the 12 mile an hour wind? But what if the wind changed and it changed to a five mile an hour wind that was from the right, okay? What happened? It just changed my wind hole, didn't it? And if I want to correct for the Coriolis, this is assuming I'm shooting north, correct for the Coriolis. I come in here, I turn on the Coriolis effect, <clears throat> and then I dial in my current heading for longitude and latitude, or I just tap it, use current, use current. And now I can shoot, if I go back in and reload my atmospherics one time, which is an update. I mean, you have to currently... You have to continually update it, okay? Look at my wind hold change, okay? It moved me out there. There's my effective hold point, accounting for everything for a 12 mile an hour crosswind, all right? If we put that back to a five mile an hour, as I did before, excuse me. <clears throat> just to, for show, this is all just to show what it'll do. So at that point in time, there would be my effective hold point, okay? There'd be, 8.1 miles per hour, right? So you notice when it changes, the wind changes, I have different elevation holes, but most of the time when I point, you point the phone at the target, let's say, and you tap in your heading and it gives you what your effective hole point is. If you have an angle shot, let's say I'm gonna go right here and I'm going to shoot uphill, I point the phone at the target and I hit current. What did it do? I'm holding a phone at a 32 degree. It automatically did that for my correction in the shot, okay? I'm not doing that currently, so I'm gonna go back to zero because I'm shooting on pretty flat ground. Anyway, all in all, this reticle, when I did all that, now of course, it let me have <clears throat> the hole point, the effective hole point, let me get rid of that. It's right here or with a zero wind. It would be right there. You want to yeah. talk about how many mils that come up you have with this? I did. I said that it had 30 mils of the, the DTR reticle in a Mark V has 30 vertical mils of come up. Okay. So, so I can take this with a 37XC and I can shoot two miles and still use 20 power. Right. I can shoot 4,000 yards and hold down in, in the lower range, in, in this range, which would be in that six or eight power range, okay? All right, so let's just oh. do one more. So let's say we're gonna do a 2,007 yard shot with just 100 yard zero. All right, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go to settings, restore default settings. I'm gonna go to rifle setup. I'm gonna pick the reticle. I'm going to the rifle. I'm gonna edit the rifle back to a 100 yard zero. I'm gonna pick the bullet, which was at the bottom, by the way because it was one of my custom bullets. I haven't put that into the program yet. I'm gonna go in and change the units. I could change all that stuff, but I'm gonna change it to mills. And the firing solution for 100 yard zero. 130 yards. So you're really, your 100 yard zero, something to know, your 100 yard zero and your 130 yard zero and most all these scopes is the same, why? because the, ape, the bullet flight, it passes through at 100 and comes back through at about 130, all right? Right, so if you were going from your previous shot to this one and you changed your zero. All right, I'm gonna shoot 2,007 yards now. So I, I'd go ahead and tap my atmospherics, pull those in so that I'm current. I'm assuming I'm shooting north currently. You're gonna take <clears> the 2,000 yard zero, the the, no, I'm going to shoot it. You, you wanted me to shoot it just with the 2,000. No, I'm saying you have to take the mills off of your scope to go back to the 100 yard zero. That's right. Correct. You'd have to dial it back out. Do that, not forget to do that. Right. I, I took it out of the ballistics program, but you'd have to dial back down to zero, which is your 100 yard zero. And so now I'm going to shoot a 2,007 yard shot with this phenomenal bullet rifle combination because it's and so it says that I hold 1,590 yards. And if 
I make that a zero wind, you'll see that that slightly changes, okay? Okay, held eight yards difference, why? Because of the wind pushing the bullet down range. So that's kind of a down and dirty version, but that's what we're essentially doing when we're on the range and um, just wanted to show you guys that. So if I want to shoot this 2007 yard shot, another one, and I want to shoot it at 20 power, well, let's say I put in a 1600 yard zero, okay? So I'm gonna put in a 1600 yard zero. It says I come up 11.4 mils. I dial up 11.4 mils. I change my zero on my rifle to 1600. Okay, and so it's back up there where it was. And now I'm gonna shoot a 2007 yard shot. Of course, I, I've just refreshed all my atmospherics and there's my directive hole point. Okay. For so elevation. Eight, 813 yards. 813 yards. That's not my effective hole point for wind, but that's my effective hole point for vertical. Now, if I if I put the dot values in and I come down, then you can see my my effective no wind zero is my two and a half mile an hour triangle. All right. There's the in the in a DTR reticle, the dots are in hundred in fifty and hundred yard inc or meter incrementals, and the dots are in when it was designed to use as it was in 5, 10, 15, 20, so on. And of course, what we're doing is something completely different. We're reassigning the dot values. <clears throat> so there's a two mile an hour hold. There's a two mile an hour hold. So where's the zero mile per hour wind hold? Right there where the triangles are. The first two and a half mile an hour hold on the original reticle is now your wind zero hold, okay? So to shoot 2,000 yards, but no wind is right there at the bottom of that. It was 813, if you recall. If I tap that, see right there, it was 813. And put that in. And then if I put in a five mile an hour wind, this is such the cool deal. Five mile an hour right hand wind, right? What it did, it just went ahead and it programmed my hold point for me. And guess what? When I do that and I, I properly enter the data, the whole point is with one within a mile an hour. Nobody's thing on the planet can do that at this point, unless you got a DARPA unit that costs a jillion bucks. So anyway, oh. anyway, that's a couple examples. Hope it helps. All the articles um, are listed on davidtub.com on the homepage if you want to read about the DTR. There's also a simulator that looks pretty similar to this if you go to the homepage of davidtub.com and look in the top right hand corner. Keep in mind this reticle. It's not square, there's nothing square. This is a parabolic curve with crooked angulation. Cause you can look, if you look at the eight, let's say, you see this, the slope in there, the slope for the vertical component to a crosswind. <clears throat> and, and guess what? We call our distance in yards or meters and hold an effective hole point in yards and meters. We call our wind in miles per hour. We have an effective hole point in miles per hour. We don't convert to mills or MOA for elevation or windage, which is a big joke in my opinion. Now, here we go, 977. Between four and five, Dave. Right to left. Five. Bingo. See that ringing? 2440, okay? Hit it at seven o'clock.